Hi, Sandeep. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about more about yourself? Yeah. Uh, hi, Arpita. Uh, so my name is Shine Deep. I did my B.Tech and E.C. from Heritage in Kolkata. And recently I completed my master's in VLSI and embedded systems from IIIT Delhi. At, at the moment, I'm working in Tejas Networks, a hardware engineer in the R&D department. Okay. Uh, tell us about uh, where exactly is your company located and your work profile, if you could tell us in detail. Right. So my company is located in Bangalore. So uh, actually, Tejas is located in Gurgaon and Bangalore, the R&D department, but I work from Bangalore. It is located in Electronic City Phase 1. Okay. Okay. So my work profile is hardware engineer, R&D. So at the moment, I'm working in bring up of boards, which are capable of transmitting at 5G rates. So at the, in the next one or two years, 5G is going to come to India, right? Yes. And Tejas will play a very major role, rolling out the 5G network in India. So recently, Tata's have bought Tejas, right? Yeah. And uh, a deal was signed between Airtel and Tejas to supply the equipment for 5G rollout. So the equipment will be from Tejas, the software will be from TCS, and the customer outreach will be from Airtel. So that's the plan for the 5G rollout. All right. Till now. All right. Okay. Okay. And. Uh... Uh, what are the prerequisites uh, somebody if they wants to join the same domain as an hardware engineer, somebody who's aspiring, some young aspirants. So what is it that they should be knowing or having knowledge of prior to applying for such role? Okay. So as far as I know, uh, Tejas Networks hires both on campus and off campus for freshers. Okay. Okay. So for on campus, they visit uh, different college campuses and the and for the off campus recruitment the students have to give a examination called e litmus okay so mm -hmm. in e litmus if you clear the cutoff the hr from pages will contact you and you know uh, interview will be scheduled based on your e litmus score so that's how it works in off campus interviews and on, on campus i think you need to be thorough with your gate concepts analog okay. electronics uh, transmission line concepts because you know Tejas is mainly in the 5G domain right and mm -hmm. all the network is uh, traveling through your uh, optical wire cables right so yeah. the concept of EM theory transmission lines uh, transmission lines come into the picture so you need to be thought of it that as well digital digital electronics analog electronics transmission mm -hmm. lines and you know, uh, if you're going to be a hardware engineer, if you're applying as a hardware engineer, you need to be thorough with your Verilog and your embedded systems concept like ARM processor, etc. Okay. Also, if you've done any major project in your MTech or VTech, you mm -hmm. need to be thorough with that as well. Okay, okay, yeah. And uh, how was it for you? You applied on campus or off campus? No, so Tejas Networks came to our campus. I'm from IIIT Delhi, as okay. I said. Yeah. So Tejas Networks was the third company to come to our college. Okay, okay. And uh, what all rounds did they conduct? And uh, totally how many rounds? What all questions were asked? If you can recall and tell us, please. So, like, it was one year back. So I oh, okay. may not recall... Mm -hmm. okay, so I'll tell okay. you what I remember. Yeah, yeah. Like how many rounds, if you can vaguely. So like, first of all, there was a right. Uh -huh. So first of all, there is a written round, right? Mm -hmm. After okay. a written round, those who qualify the written round, uh, they move on to the interview round. Okay. okay. So there are two rounds of interview mainly. Uh -huh. If you qualify okay. the first round, you move on to the second. Okay. okay. And okay. after you qualify both technical rounds of interview, there's an HR round. HR round is just a formality. They call you to tell you that you've got the job. Okay. Okay. So there's nothing like, nothing to worry about in HR. The mm -hmm. only thing you need to focus on is, is all the technical rounds. 
okay and as i said before in technical rounds you need to be thorough with your fundamental concepts of analog electronics mm -hmm. like diodes clippers clampers and mm -hmm. you know op operational amplifiers mm -hmm. like that or you can go through your transmission line you should be thorough with your digital electronics concepts okay. you know what all components are active and passive elements what consumes more power what is the basis fundamental operation principle of an fpga right all those okay. concepts come into the picture okay. uh, yeah that's it and in the written round mainly focus on previous year gate questions okay so okay. like i think there are 30 there were 30 questions around 30 questions okay. and i think you would be given around 75 minutes one and a half hours for 30 questions okay, okay. and most of the questions were like two mark gate questions for ECE guys okay and i found around four or five questions which had come in previous year gate questions okay right. so i think preparing previous year gate questions would be enough to crack the written exam i had attempted around 20 or 22 questions i don't know i think i got around 18 or 19 correct out of 30 but i qualified okay. Okay, that's that's nice. Okay, and uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, you also cracked the gate exam, right? So could you tell us about that gate journey and uh, what was your uh, gate score and your ranking and uh, how did you prepare for it? Some of the advice that you could give here. Right, right. So I did my B.Tech from Heritage, right? And I was an okay. intern in Qualcomm. Okay. Okay. I was interning in Qualcomm at the same time. I was preparing for gate by myself. So mm -hmm. I passed in 2018, my B.Tech in 2018. And okay. I started interning at Qualcomm. The internship was around for six months. Mm -hmm. So from July to, I think, November or December. Okay. Okay. So... I did, I did not enroll in an institute because I didn't have the time. So okay. I did self study. I mm -hmm. prepared, I focused on like the major subjects. I couldn't complete the whole syllabus. I focused wow. on the major subjects like uh, EM, uh, like control systems, digital electronics, analog electronics, aptitude, mathematics. And I managed to, I think my gate score was around 611 or 612. It was not that great, but luckily it was enough to, you know, cut. Yeah clear the cutoff from my college yeah okay. okay i don't remember the rank but I, the scale uh, score was around 610 or 12. okay okay and uh, uh, what what was your like reference study materials for the gate or the standard books okay <clears throat> okay so i don't remember the books which i've followed all right uh, all right I used to watch these videos from the Gate Academy. Umesh okay. Tandesar was there. So, okay. like, he's very popular among the students who are studying by themselves for Gate, right? Okay. So, I followed some of his videos. And okay. the rest, I uh, read books. Mm -hmm. And did the preparation from there. Okay. Uh, okay. For practicing previous year Gate questions, I think I had bought a Made Easy book. And the handbook is there for from Made Easy, which contains mm -hmm. all the formulas and stuff mm -hmm. uh, that I use for revision. Okay, okay, all right. And uh, also, you mentioned you interned at Qualcomm, right? So, right. Uh, how was it? Uh, how did you apply for that? And what was the what was your learning journey throughout the six months? Yeah, it was good. Like. Uh, I was in the verification domain. Okay. okay. So technically it was good. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had applied actually off campus and mm -hmm. I was shortlisted after a, a, a telephonic interview. So there were okay. around three rounds. Okay. Okay. So that's how it went. Okay. So, uh, do you remember the questions, like some of them, the number of rounds, as you mentioned, three rounds, there were three technical rounds? Yeah. 
Okay. Three technical rounds were there, in, okay. including the telephonic round. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. in the telephonic round, uh, in the telephonic round, the recruiter mainly asked me about like uh, what are my interests in uh, academics. Like he asked me to tell him about two or three favorite subjects. I mentioned digital and control systems. Mm -hmm. He asked me questions from that. He couldn't ask much from control system because you know Qualcomm is more focused on the digital domain. Yes. And still he, he managed to ask me some fundamentals from control systems. And in the uh, first and second rounds we are on Skype. Okay. okay. And there he asked me about my BTEC project. So my BTEC, okay. my BTEC project was based on all digital phase lock loop. Okay, and it was a novel concept back then because all the phase lock loops were either analog in nature or were not completely digital. Mm -hmm. Like it was hybrid. Okay. okay. But my project focused on an all digital PLL, and that is why I got interested and went deep inside that okay. project. But luckily, I could manage, I could come up <clears throat> with interesting answers, which he found impressive. So, okay. moved on to the second round. In second okay. round, I was asked uh, again digital electronics, some puzzles. All right. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and puzzles are like puzzles are a major part of their interview. I would suggest every aspirant who is preparing for Qualcomm mm -hmm. to go through these puzzles. Like, you can find these puzzles all over the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. And uh, overall, how long did this entire uh, procedure take? Uh, the like your interview short around and... around two months. Two months. Okay. Okay. Yeah, two or two and a half months. All right. All right. And uh, also, uh, like, uh, what is it that uh, coming back to your uh, current role? Uh, so is okay. it like uh, uh, something like front end or back end in VLSI, right? We have two domains, or is it totally different? How is it? Okay, I'll tell you how it works. Like, uh -huh. uh, see, we design the boards. Okay, mm -hmm. what Tejas does is it designs the boards, mm -hmm. but it exports the components like. We have uh, we have an FPGA, right? We have a board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the board resides various components like the switching IC, the mm -hmm. Mac layer, mm -hmm. the Mac IC, and yeah. Ethernet ports and all that. Okay. So we mainly use Broadcom switching ICs for, uh, you know, uh, routing purposes, routing the signals from the uh, mm -hmm. main unit to the peripheral units, customer units. Okay. Right. So there is. So, uh, so there is considerable research going on in this area, but it's just been three months for me at Tejas. So what oh, I do right. is I was, so what I do is I was involved in the bring up of board. Okay. okay. So bring up is basically you test, you, you, know, you send the board for manufacturing. And once it comes back from manufacturing, a prototype comes back, right? Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to test on this prototype, whether the prototype is working as desired or not. If you pass the prototype, bulk manufacturing will take place, which will okay. be again dispersed to the customers. Okay. okay. So that okay. is how your prototype works. So I, so bring up board is basically you test this prototype, you test whether there are any defects in your design, right? Your, uh, you test whether your design is working as intended. Right. Okay. That is where I worked for the last uh, one or one and a half months. And now I'm doing some research. Like we are mm -hmm. working on some new stuff. Right. Okay. So okay. previously, previously the boards were uh, powered by big, big fans. Right. So these FPGAs, mm -hmm. they, they route major amount of traffic. Right. You know how much traffic this uh, 4G network generates in just yeah. a minimum on, amount of time. Right. Right. So they get overheated okay and you need some fans major mm -hmm. big big fans to dissipate mm -hmm. this amount of heat okay. okay okay and instead of fans we are now focusing on liquid cooling units okay, okay. so we are seeing if liquid cooling units can be integrated onto these boards mm -hmm. in order to make them more efficient in terms of power consumption as well as media okay. so that is another aspect of uh, you know aspect where research is currently going on at pages all right, all right. Okay.
and uh, also uh, like uh, uh, any other projects that you had done in your uh, b tech or m tech that really helped you uh, and were there uh, particularly questions like you mentioned during your qualcom interview while you applied for the internship they focused on your project right so apart from that had right. you done any projects considering both your bachelor's and your master's that really helped you right uh, so all my projects were mainly focused on vlsi okay all okay. my mtech projects were mainly okay. focused on vlsi mm -hmm. and since tejas is an embedded systems company mm -hmm. they didn't uh, they were not much interested in my projects okay 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 all they right. just uh, and the majority of the times they would be interested in your fundamental knowledge of your uh, like of basic electronics like analog and digital that okay, will be enough okay. for them okay, because okay. once you go to tejas you will get around 20 or 25 days of training okay. where they'll teach you about networking and stuff because mm -hmm. you know most of the people are not aware of networking how networking happens right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they'll teach you you just need to mm -hmm. uh, have a good grasp of fundamentals okay okay and this uh, training basically focuses on networking uh, or like what exactly do they train you on? Uh, they train us on various technologies, right? And mm -hmm. various products, which they just uses in okay. terms of these technologies. Like uh, you would have heard of GPON, right? So mm -hmm. uh, gigabit passive optical networks, right? Okay. GPON, your ethernet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some other technologies are there which i'm not aware of my team basically works in gpon networks okay. Mm -hmm. okay so so like five or six technologies are there mm -hmm. so the you know the freshers who are coming to tejas get an intensive hands-on training in these technologies and products okay okay no that's that's great and uh, this entire process of you getting a offer letter from Tejas that took how long? Yeah, since uh, it was an on campus drive, mm -hmm. the interviews happened on I got the offer on the same day itself. Oh, okay. Like okay. The entire okay. process. Yeah, because okay. it was an on campus process. It was like on campus process I've heard takes one or maximum two days. Yeah, right. It is the off campus process which takes a long longer amount of time. time. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. And apart from this, have you given any other interviews for any other companies? Mm, yeah, actually, uh, uh, I had given an interview for mm -hmm. this Marvel Semiconductors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Back in I think June. Okay. Okay, but I didn't qualify. And okay. like I, I didn't qualify in the sense I didn't get the job. I got mm -hmm. to the final round, mm -hmm. and I didn't got and get the job after. okay 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 so how many rounds did they conduct and how was your experience overall here at marvel semiconductors okay so at marvel semiconductors uh, the hr called me and mm -hmm. an interview was scheduled on some day mm -hmm. there were two technical rounds okay so if you qualify the first round you move on to the second round okay okay and you had applied and, off campus through LinkedIn or other job portals? You know, I don't remember actually if I had applied for Marvel Semiconductors, but anyway, the HR called. Okay, um, okay. And on campus, before getting into Tejas, I had interviewed for Qualcomm and mm -hmm. this TCS mm -hmm. R&D. Okay, okay. TCS Research. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. That's nice. And also, uh, what was what would be your advice for the young aspirants? You know, either they are uh, in their B or B Tech or they are in their Masters, right? So it is always advisable to start early. So what is that you would advise them, considering from your overall experiences that really helped you throughout your journey? Okay, so coming from an industry point of view, mm -hmm. if you want to join industry, mm -hmm. uh, 
directly or immediately after your BTEC. Yeah. I think you should be thorough with your fundamental language concepts because okay. anywhere you go, mm -hmm. be it Qualcomm or Tages or NXP or ST Micro or SanDisk, okay. majority of the BTEC people are given software roles, right? Yeah. I'm not completely sure about this, but I've, mm -hmm. like I'm talking from experience, they are giving, they are given majorly given software roles. So okay. you should be thorough with your fundamental concepts about C, Java, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. they are doing these days. I'm not a software kind of guy, so uh -huh. I'm not sure what the current okay. trend is in the software market. So okay. And overall, you should be thorough with your digital concepts because mm -hmm. digital concepts are used everywhere. Correct. Be it in software companies mm -hmm. or hardware companies. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Analog may not be that important, but digital is very, very important for you, for the EC guys, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, that would be my advice to the B Tech people. Mm -hmm. And for the M Tech guys, like I was a 2020 fresher, right? Mm -hmm. And that, uh, 2020, I was at, I got my job in 2020. I'm a 2021 pass out. So oh, okay. we were the first batch to be hit by this COVID wave. And oh. this uncertainty was there in the industry. Yeah, Even right. Even all, all, yeah, all the companies were, you know, minimizing mm -hmm. their recruitment and cutting down on costs. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of uncertainty around yes. jobs. So mm -hmm. you see, no one can predict the market, right? Mm. But one thing right. is for sure that skill will be valued everywhere, yeah, every time. Right. So it's better. So it's better that you upgrade yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, get to know the latest technologies and trends in the present uh, technology market. Because Correct. you know, once once this five G comes into the picture, mm -hmm. you know, VLS. Mm -hmm and communications will integrate way better okay because you know 5g devices will require more amount of more advanced node ics right and these yeah. ics are made by vlsi people and this uh, networking this uh, traveling arrangement is made by the nation people right all the software side on the, the communication aspect is made by the csp guys so this will lead to a better integration between the vlsi and the communication guys so even if you so i've i've seen a lot of you know mm -hmm. uh, lot of pessimism behind taking up communications that a yard job nahi hai. there's yeah. no job in the csp industry well that mm -hmm. is going to change when the 5g once the 5g comes to india Right. Because you know, five G will lead to a lot of employment, and and I think all the companies, be it Cisco, be it net, I mean, I'm talking about the networking companies like Tejas Network, Cisco, mm -hmm. Juniper Networks. I think they are going to you know, yeah, uh, increase their hiring because oh, right. you know demand for five G will eventually go up. Okay, okay, yeah, right. I agree, and also. You mentioned that uh, students, you know, fresh graduates, they should be well versed with the digital concepts, strong concepts about the basics of electronics, and they should be well versed with uh, C and Java, right? But apart right. from this, someone who is, you know, really interested in VLSI, so okay. what is it that they should be starting to practice from beginning, right? Like either it is projects, either it is internships, or either it is they should be. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, be aware of the current trends and the technologies. If we right. speak so, about purely students, like, you know, who want to focus on getting into VLSI domain only. Okay. So for specifically VLSI domain, I would suggest you to make your digital VLSI and analog VLSI concepts strong. Okay. From, you know, from the RTL to GDS flow get acquainted with the rtl to gds flow because you know once you write an rtl you run sda on it you run you do formal verification you do dft right you do the physical design get thorough with all these concepts because you know major uh, maximum of the companies be it qualcomm or nxp or sst micro you name any company they work on digital flow mm -hmm. very few companies work on analog flow and that too requires custom designs so custom right. designs is very less in number nowadays because the time to market is constricted. They mainly focus on digital flow. Right. So get very acquainted with this digital flow from RTL mm -hmm. to GDS. Okay. And if you're if you're doing internship anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, focus on the learning over there. 
okay because you know once you move from an intern company to a full time job the company which you'll be applying to will majorly ask you what did you learn in during your internship yeah and that's exactly. your focus point yes i agree right so you mean to say that entire internship period they should be able to grasp a lot of things and learn things at industry level how they work right right and i think there are a couple of sites also in the internet which provides excellent in, uh, like vlsi interview questions okay like mm -hmm. uh, so i think they can go through that as well yeah right absolutely all right and anything else like apart from this your uh, personal advice for the candidates aspiring candidates Just keep trying them. All right, all right. Yeah, because a lot because, of students, you know, very... uh, they apply. Yes. Say they apply for some five companies, ten companies. Uh, due to some reason, they get rejected and they get you know uh, demotivated. So I think uh, that there should be something that should make them keep going, right? Right. You know. Yeah. Uh... frankly speaking rejection is a part of the process of an interview yeah, right exactly. but the more you get but the more you get rejected mm -hmm. say you get rejected in 10 companies and finally yeah. you crack a job offer right yeah. the amount of joy which you'll feel inside you the amount of satisfaction exactly you know will be mm -hmm. immense so yeah. just focus on the satisfaction focus on the learning and mm -hmm. just keep trying until you achieve your dreams yeah absolutely totally agree and you know, the persistence is the key persistence and discipline yes yes absolutely right uh all right then uh sandeep thank you so much uh, you have shared your entire journey Uh, yeah, you know, thanks, yeah. Arpita, and I'm very yeah. glad that you're doing these for the students, for the aspirants. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be learning a lot from your channel, I hope. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because uh, you know, uh, I think that's the need of the R students. Uh, will reach out and uh, get to know the real experiences, and I'm sure this is definitely going to help them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks a thanks. lot thank you so much for your time and all and sharing all the entire experience and uh, whatever you have learned and whatever that has helped you no worries arpita thanks yeah. a lot thank you thanks bye. a lot bye, bye.